British Rail has something of a mixed reputation among railway historians, but they did bring a number of innovations to the UK railway network. Liner trains, high-speed trains, widespread electrification, closing down unremunerative lines to... OK, bad example. No idea was quite so radical as their interplanetary spacecraft. Yes, this really happened. Not a dream, not an imaginary story. In 1970, British Rail filed a patent application for a flying saucer. The patent was granted in 1973. What kind of fever dream inspired this concept? Well, it seems to have come about almost by accident. The designer, Charles Osmond Frederick, originally envisioned it as a lifting platform, but he seems to have got a bit carried away. In the 60s, the rise of air travel was a matter of some concern for British Rail. In fact, they envisioned rebuilding a number of their stations with heliports on the roof, so that when everyone had a helicopter in their driveway and trains went extinct, BR would be ahead of the game. The idea was seriously considered for Victoria, and God only knows what sort of architectural monstrosity we would have got if saner minds hadn't prevailed. Presumably the flying saucer was devised with a similar concept in mind, get in on the ground floor, so to speak, with the radical new technology that would someday replace trains. But Frederick went a bit further, and by the time the patent was filed, the concept had developed into an actual starship. The ship was to be powered by nuclear fusion, ignited by, in the words of the patent document, one or more pulsed laser beams which take their power from homopolar generators and possibly excess energy generated by the fusion reactor. Now, maybe everyone knows what a homopolar generator is, and I'm just ignorant, but I had to look that up. Apparently it's a kind of dynamo that uses a wheel somehow, I don't know, I barely scraped a B in GCSE physics. Now I have a YouTube channel and make money off my ignorance because there's no justice in the world. Back to the saucer. So, someone who knows how a homopolar generator works, or is it homopola? Anyway... Somebody who knows how that sort of generator works uses a laser to ignite the fusion reaction. The supercharged particles generated would be directed by magnetic fields created by superconducting electromagnets, and so you have your thrust. Frederick observed that such a form of energy would be very efficient and very cheap. Now, I'm no spacetologist, but I can see one or two flaws in this concept. The most obvious one is that fusion reactors don't exist. And 50 years ago, they didn't exist even harder. Room temperature superconductors also don't exist, so that's two big flaws in this idea right off the bat. There's more. Frederick envisioned a shield to protect the passenger cabin made of some heavy material. He didn't specify what. Uh, I'm presuming lead. But we might argue that a heavy material isn't what you want when you're fighting both gravity and sceptical YouTubers. So I guess this is another theoretical aspect to consider. There's also no word on what protection, if any, is provided for those standing near the saucer when it takes off. Would it be launched from orbit, perhaps? All in all, this is probably the craziest idea British Rail ever came up with. I have seen people online defend it as proof that British Rail was innovative and forward-thinking, but anyone can come up with an idea. I really don't see the point of proposing a fast, cheap and efficient form of motive power when it relies on technology that is purely theoretical. I mean, I could do that right now. I propose a form of locomotive that will be powered by magic. As soon as we discover magic, I'm going to be rich. The patent has since expired, so if you want to build your own nuclear fusion-powered force field generating interplanetary spacecraft that will fatally irradiate everyone in the immediate vicinity, there's nothing to stop you. Apart from the police, I guess. It's a shame British Rail never actually built it. Sounds like they could use a flying saucer for their pie-in-the-sky thinking. Ha! Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like, share with your friends, consider subscribing. Normally I make videos about things I vaguely understand, so I don't have to compensate with bad jokes so much. 
Anyway, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio. Hello, me again. So while I was editing this, I discovered the truth behind this patent, which is that Charles Osmond Frederick was employed by the British Rail Technical Office when he came up with this, and it was a matter of policy that any inventions that employees of the office came up with had to be patented. So that's why this exists, and it turns out that British Rail actually weren't planning to invade Mars, which is terribly disappointing, and I hope I haven't ruined your evening. Oh well. Cheerio.